Hello, I am Roggers, the voice of Alfie in the Cyberpunk animated web series and music project XRL7. And welcome to the side series XRL7 Inspirations. I'm in control for this episode, so with that said, let's get down to business. So when I was growing up, video games had a big part in my life. The escapism it gave me into a digital world full of mystery, puzzles, action and adventure. They let my imagination run wild, from the days of Pac-Man and Space Invaders to Super Mario, Sonic and beyond. But back in 1998, one title stole my imagination more than any other that I can remember, and that was Metal Gear Solid. Developed and published by Konami for the PlayStation 1, Metal Gear Solid was actually the third game in a series of titles by acclaimed video game designer Hideo Kojima, who released the first two games titled Metal Gear in 1987 and then its sequel Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake in 1990. These two games would be praised for their unique stealth and evasion gameplay that were innovative for their time. Yet. It would be another eight years until Kojima and Konami would team up again to bring the series to the new generation of gamers and people around the world would bear witness to what I feel is one of the best games ever made. So the game itself is geared as an action adventure stealth video game where players take control of the game's protagonist, Solid Snake a highly skilled special operations soldier who is adept at solo stealth and espionage missions. In the game, he is tasked with infiltrating a nuclear weapons facility known as Shadow Moses and neutralizing the terrorist threat through a group known as Foxhound, a renegade special forces unit. Upon its release, Metal Gear Solid was lauded for its combination of stealth and combat gameplay intertwined with cinematic cutscenes that throughout the game provide a pivotal role in progressing the story through all its twists and turns. But we gotta talk about the voice casting. It was insane! I mean, you had the likes of David Hayter voicing Solid Snake and his signature growl. And the versatile talent of Cam Clark as the game's main antagonist, Liquid Snake. You know, you remember him from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What am I gonna do? I'm terrified of snakes. No, well probably you weren't born yet. On to the gameplay! Most of the time, you'll find yourself sneaking past grunts by playing Knock Knock. Shut up in there, will ya? Doing commando crawls on your belly like a toddler, or literally hiding in a box. Just a box. Amongst all the stealthy shenanigans, you keep getting calls on your trusty in-ear radio codec system, mainly from the Colonel from Rambo. Some dude questionably named Deep Throat, gross, and others including Mei Ling, who would save your game in exchange for talking your face off with ancient proverbs and nonsense that were of no use to me whatsoever. Have you ever heard that? It's Elizabeth Barrett Browning. No, Mei Ling! Just save my game and shut up! I'm trying to save the world, damn it! Apart from cutscenes, the codex dialogue was the main way to drive the story throughout the game. Not to mention, it was responsible for one of the most memorable sound clips on a character's death. Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? You idiot! There's so many memorable moments to choose from in the game, but some that stick out were like the time you meet Meryl, who is undercover as an enemy soldier and instantly Snake can tell she's different from the rest by the way she hesitates in combat, amongst other things. You've got a great butt. Another memorable sequence is where you get to fight a member of the Foxhound unit, Psycho Mantis. 
This dude is on another level. He floats in the air for a start and is able to read your save game data. And to top it off, he's dressed in what can only be described as some sort of gimp suit with a gas mask, which apparently helps him focus his abilities. Yeah, right. You know what else he can read? Your controller inputs. That's right, you can't f***ing hear him. You're running round for a good 10 minutes until you're told to plug your controller into port two. Take me out of the game, why don't you, Hideo? Take that, man. There were other great boss fights, like when you beat up a tank, chop down a chopper, and duel with a head-banging, masochistic cyborg ninja who funnily enough was the character that stayed with me the most literally on my arm you even fight the game's namesake metal gear what's a metal gear i hear you say this a nuclear equipped walking battle tank Honourable mention has to go to the Sniper Wolf section, where the seasoned Solid Snake's aim is questionable at best and looks like he's having severe muscle spasms, unless you use performance-enhancing drugs. No urine tests here, baby! Unless you're into that sort of thing, in which case put a cardboard box on near some wolves and watch the magic happen. Speaking of waterworks, that reminds me of a character called Otacon. He's a hacker and lead scientist that helps you out, but whom you meet under awkward circumstances. Stealth camouflage? Who are you? Where is my friend? Metal Gear Solid literally ticks all the boxes. It had me absolutely hooked from start to finish. There's so much more I could say, but I'll leave you with this anecdote from when I was first playing it and Mike was round my house and my dad said this of the cinematic nature of the game. It's like a movie. Oh, oh, do you like my movie? Thanks for watching and until next time, like, subscribe and check out our Patreon for exclusive rewards. The video went off without a hitch. The vector? Yes. The algorithm should become activated soon. Right on schedule. Yes, sir. We covered all bases to avoid copyright data infringement. No, sir. Our channel is intact. No cursing in this series. This isn't a rock review. No. I have no idea if anyone will get this post-credit reference. Who knows who's still watching? Yes, sir. It takes a well-balanced individual such as yourself to carry a series. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. President.